So what is up guys, Nick here, helping you to master your technology and welcome back to the channel. Yes, I did order the iPhone 15 Pro Max. I'm pretty sure that's on your mind right now as the pre-orders are today. But today I wanna talk about the iPhone 12 Pro Max three years later. I will be covering this against the 15 Pro Max if you wanna wait for the comparison review. If you have one of these and you're not quite ready to make that jump just yet, but also I want to talk about three years later if this phone is worth keeping or upgrading in this video. So I remember this phone like it was yesterday, it came out in the height of the pandemic in 2020. And while iPhones weren't dominating people's mind at that time, I can tell you for sure that Apple still sold these out in the initial pre-orders as well, at least for the first couple of weeks. So let's begin by talking about the body and the build should you upgrade it here well this is when they kind of brought what the current iphone design looks like on even the current 15 pro max which is a 6.7 inch screen they went from a 6.5 here to a 6.7 they do have a notch on here which they don't have anymore at dynamic island but this kind of started the 6.7 inch iphone and so yes this is still definitely worth keeping if you don't you know need if you want a bigger screen size and you're not ready to stay with the same screen size definitely worth keeping here the build of it also with the stainless steel man my silver stainless steel scratched so much on the iphone 12 pro max you could see that big old scuff right there so i wasn't a big fan of the silver version just absolutely gross right there but at the same time it's still, I mean, I was a fan of the look of it, but just that natural stainless steel just scratched so easily. So the brushed borders on the upcoming 15 Pro Max will probably be something you'll like if you have OCD about scratches and stuff. And don't tell me about polishing the stainless steel. I've done that multiple times, didn't fix anything. Now, in terms of the back material, it's a matte texture. It's kind of hard to see that Apple logo because of my lights in here, but matte texture so overall the phone a little bit lighter as well than the 14 pro max as well as the iphone 13 pro max this one actually is closer to the weight of the 15 pro max and so i mean it's only a few grams difference so this if you ever felt a 12 pro max that's about the weight of the upcoming 15 pro max at least on the spec sheet so yeah overall i would say the build the design should you go to the uh next phone or should you keep it it really depends on your budget and if you really want a new phone. I don't think you have to. I still think the 12 Pro Max feels premium in 2023. Um, I, and I think if you want a massive redesign, I would still wait until next, until next year. But if you're doing upgrade, your battery is trashing on this phone, it's going to be a solid one nonetheless. Okay, so in the display department, again, 6.7 inch display. The big upgrades here to the iPhone 12 Pro Max, if you upgrade now, will be you'll get a ProMotion display on the newer Pros. That's for sure. This was the last Pro with a 60 hertz panel. Um, the phone's still plenty smooth though. The 14 Plus and the 15 Plus still retain the, the 60 hertz panel, so this is not slow at all. And in terms of its actual quality, we are looking at OLED display, so Super Retina XDR, so very nice in terms of saturation, contrast ratios, and stuff like that. Um, also, this notch actually was one of the most least distracting to me of all of them because it was up higher and it didn't cut in deeper like the iPhone 13 Pro Max and no dynamic island, which really stands out on a current iPhone. So this one was one of my favorite of the notches. I don't really like notches in general, but of the notches, this was one of my favorite ones. It was the most least distracting in my opinion, even though it was longer this way, it was just up there. You didn't really even pay attention to it on this phone. It's kind of like the ones you see on the MacBooks. So overall, the display gets plenty bright still. I would just keep the phone here in terms of display, unless again, the battery life is horrible. This is still a keeper, I feel like, unless you just have to have that upgrade. At the same time, if you are sick of 60 Hertz, you want a smoother iPhone, and you want a brighter in sunlight iPhone, then it's definitely not a keeper. It's an upgrade here. Um, but these things still, even three years later, these things, I don't know why they just feel so small. Like they don't feel like life changing things. They just feel like an experiential upgrade. It's kind of like when you get a, a new pair of shoes or something and it has a slightly different design. It has maybe a little bit more tread. It's a little bit lighter, but it's still a shoe. You know what I'm saying? Or if you get a brand new, you know, jacket that has a few more 
features like an added hoodie you know that has like an extra you know zipper or something or a pocket in there like it's slight new features here and there but it's not really like life-changing stuff it's just experience upgrades and if you want if you're chasing better experiences you'll definitely like that display upgrade. now from the software perspective if you are looking to keep your phone longer term um, these 16, you know, 0.6.1 updates available here. We're going to 17 next week. If you want to see a 17 video on this phone, let me know in the comments. But this phone has got about two or three years left. Um, surprisingly, even though it's super powerful, it's getting closer to end of life. We have two to three years left on this one. So while that's not anytime soon, uh, it's still, you know, you, you got a couple years left. You, if you want to go longer term, you're definitely going to want to do an upgrade. So if you want to go to the 15 Pro Max right now, um, if you want five more years of iPhone use and you don't want to buy anything next year or whatever, then you'll want to do the upgrade. But I'm pretty sure that the iPhone 12 Pro Max is going to run this software very smoothly, very easily. We haven't really had any issues with performance on this phone. And this phone has six gigabytes of RAM, which is a lot for an iPhone. The new ones have eight but it's about time Android's phone's been having that forever. The A14 Bionic chip, you know, is still very fast. And Apple has proven time and time again, they don't need the highest specs to give you the best um, performance and software. They can do that because iOS is built from top to bottom and it's super efficient. So you can see right here, no issues. And I, I mean, that doesn't really show anything. Gaming warms this phone up a little bit for sure, especially in the back. But it still runs pretty good. You can see speeding through the pre-orders although the apple app was crashing this morning so i don't know about speeding through but yeah just performance still very solid no issues whatsoever at all so in terms of this area you will get better performance but what you're really going to notice if you had a 12 pro max is you're going to notice the promotion and you're going to think it's faster because of the faster refresh which it is but that's not really the cpu the cpu wise day to day I don't think most people would still make this phone choke right here. So these chips are basically overkill on these iPhones these days. They've been for a while. And um, unless you're you're in the gaming, which I don't know why you would do that on there. If you have a game console or an iPad, this is definitely not an area what I would just say you got to go right now. Unless that, that chip is definitely slowing down and messing up your battery, then there's a reason. But other than that, software performance still a thumbs up here okay so for the cameras man that i love the iphone 12 pro max's cameras these things were great for sure at the time they weren't massively improved over the 11 pro max but i loved the 11 pro max's cameras 2.5 times zoom and you can go up to 12x which is not bad for a phone that's three years old with the new iphone getting much better zoom this one is still very solid and they talked about in the event how you could do all these different modes. Well, you can still do almost a macro mode just using the ultra wide on here. So there's a lot of different modes. Like there's one shot, there's two, there's three, there's four or five. You can do multiple shots, although you do go digital zoom here. It's still okay, especially in good sunlight. And then over here you have 4K 60 video, which is still top level video. If you do that right now in 2023, go over here. You can still get top level video on the front. Portrait modes are solid, panoramic. Everything about this camera is still very solid. Let me go ahead and show you some samples really quick. All right, so here's some pictures I took in LA and you'll see right here, just the detail is it's there. And so at the same time, you know, while newer iPhones are getting a little bit sharper, a little bit more pro, the dynamic range is still good on the iPhone 12 Pro Max. There's This camera is still like a really strong offering here. I mean, it's not offered anymore, but it's still a strong, strong competitor against a lot of budget phones these days. And um, honestly, I could use this in 2023 and not even think twice about my camera needing an upgrade. So the cameras have been good for a while. They just get better and better every year. And so the, the real thing is, is, do you want more zoom? If you're tired of the zoom on here, you want to reach further, then you want to get rid of this thing, do an upgrade. Do you want macro mode? Because it doesn't have a dedicated macro mode. Then you want to do an upgrade. Do you want more storage? You want to go up in storage because you didn't get the higher storage on this model and you're running low? Then you'll want to do an upgrade. From a quality standpoint, yes, I still think you'll want to do an upgrade if you really care about quality. But I still think anybody could get started in photography and get some amazing results on this tool right here in the iPhone 12 Pro Max. So, 
it's it's a maybe upgrade for depending on the person but not for everyone some other things about this phone it does have the 5g and we do have ourselves pretty good performance in the phone call qualities as it had qualcomm modems in here the bluetooth 5.0 on here is getting a little bit old and this does have usb-c um, did I say USB-C? Lightning, sorry, the new phone's got USB-C. It does have lightning, which you probably already have a cable for. It doesn't charge very fast. Um, and the resale value on this is not super high anymore. You probably get about four or 500 bucks for this, which is not terrible, but um, it's not super high. But if you wanna get the, extract the most value out of your resale, you might wanna get rid of this thing now because next year it's gonna be even less for you. At the end of the day, the iPhone 12 Pro Max had decent audio as well. Um, this phone is still very solid. There's not really anything um, I think Apple is doing these days that really has catapulted this product to the next level. It's like they took this product and made a little bit of refinement on the 13 Pro Max, another refinement on the 14 Pro Max, and a polished refinement with the nice titanium edges on the 15 Pro Max. Upgrade or keep it, I'd say if your battery is getting low on this phone, um, so if you want to get better battery life, this one also has a smaller battery, so not the best battery life in the world. Um, if you want to get better battery life, do the upgrade for sure. If you want to get a smoother display, you're sick of 60 hertz, do the upgrade. If your gaming performance is lacking and it's heating up your phone too much, big chip upgrades, do the upgrade. But if you're just a casual iPhone user who loves your Pro Max and you don't really see a reason to go up another thousand bucks, I think next year's 16 Pro Max will be, um, or Ultra, whatever they call it, is going to be more of a catapult leap in terms of going to the next iPhone. So if you can hold out, I think you'll get more value. But if you want to do an upgrade now, going to a 15 Pro Max would be a solid upgrade. So I do recommend it if you're the right person for that upgrade. Let me know your thoughts on the 12 Pro Max. Do you have one or you do not have one? Thumbs up if you enjoyed it, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace.